So in this segment, we're going to be talking about um, the UK and Australia failing to get an agreement. So we're not a million miles away from getting an agreement, an agreement from the with Australia, Britain with Australia. But it's like we are a million miles away from them geographically. Uh, but um, anyways, he may have travelled more than 10,000 miles from Canberra to London, but Dan Tehan left Britain without a trade deal. Liz Truss, I, th- I thought you said we had this trade deal. What What's happened? I don't understand. Liz, can you tell us what's happened? I, mean, I suppose she's in the foreign office now, so it's not really her job. But I thought this, you know, we got this tremendous trade deal with Australia, you know, that violates certain climate accord agreements. What's happened, bro? What, what What's going on? So the Australia trade minister, this is someone who, um, without adding too much filler onto this video, um, Liz Trust accused of not having enough stamina and not being experienced enough as a trade negotiator, despite the fact that Liz Trust doesn't have that much experience in trade negotiations. So the Australian trade minister had hoped to clinch an agreement with the UK uh, counterpart Anne Marie Tre- Trevelin at the end of his long multi stop trip across the globe, but the two sides ended up kicking down the can. Why? We couldn't even get it. As I know we're all impatient to get the that signature on the final uh, inked deal, Tehan told the UK Australia Chamber of Commerce at a breakfast event um, at the time. The morning after this meeting, Trevelin said, I, I can tell you no one is more impatient than me to get this done, but we have to make sure that we get it right. Well, you haven't because you offered massive concessions to Australia just like you did to New Zealand. So you're not getting it right. You're just giving more concessions, which is what the Australians want. The two sides reached an agreement in principle in June, but have spent months wrangling over the legal text, converting a 16-page draft agreement into a fully scrubbed tomb both sides can take uh, can sign up to has turned out to be more of a challenge than was hoped. It's almost like getting a trade deal is not that easy. Hmm, who could have told you this? There are 32 chapters in the agreement, plus four annexes, with multiple subsections and nine letters, side letters. By the end of Tehan's visit, 29 of those chapters had their legal text finalised with three to go. The Australian version is about 1,600 pages, whilst the UK one is 2,600 pages. He said, I'm not quite sure whether it's just the typing spaces or the different sides of the schedule, Tehan quipped, but they've got a few more pages than us. Kind of funny, I'll give him that. Politicians aren't known for jokes, apart from my Prime Minister, who is a joke. Um, But yeah. The visit was an emotional roller coaster for UK officials hoping to get the agreement over the line. One person said the two sides were working on progressing through the day despite the lack of closure. So this is the UK desperate to get this deal. One person at the event Tahan spoke at said some eyebrows were raised when he said he had hoped to build on migration agreements in the deal, one of which will see people under the age of 35 able to get working visas more easily. He said he wanted migration to be free flowing between the two nations and as good a deal as the UK had with the EU. So he wants a full free trade agreement by the sounds of it, something Canada-esque, potentially, something like Canada has with the UK temporarily via CETA. Um, it's quite interesting that he wants free freedom of movement, potentially, between the two nations, which is odd considering how far we are. Um, I'm not quite sure how Australia would benefit from freedom of movement with the UK. It seems a bit empire But um, what can we gather from this video? It's the fact that the UK still hasn't managed to get this trade deal over the line despite hyping it up so much. Oh, we could have a free trade deal with loads of other countries. Where they are? All you've got are rollover deals. The only one that you had was a bespoke deal would be this one. And you couldn't even get that over the line yet. What are you waiting for? The Australians obviously want more concessions here, but if it's the hope that they can get it right, clearly you haven't tried to do that from the jump. So what's a few more concessions? What's a few more bankrupt farmers? Who knows? Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.